This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Protect your valuable data from prying eyes with a free account from the new and improved Dashlane. Have you ever read an article or seen a news story that seems just a little off and decided to do a bit of digging? If you have, odds are you've used a fact-checking website to help you determine whether your hunch was correct and that the piece of news was indeed false. Fact-checkers perform a valuable and drastically underappreciated service, keeping tabs on what public figures say and correcting them when they say something that's not accurate. You have fact-checkers for politics, pop culture and urban legends, and specific hot-button issues. If you have a question about a statement's truthfulness, odds are you can find several nonpartisan organizations who can help clear up the confusion. You can even find at least one meta-fact-checker, a group dedicated to fact-checking the fact-checkers for bias. Fact-checkers are an incredibly useful tool for combating the spread of fake news on social media and for helping citizens stay on top of what's accurate and what's not when it comes to highly partisan topics. It's a fascinating and useful resource, but how exactly does it work? How do we know that these fact-checkers are correct? Contrary to some people's belief, fact-checking organizations don't just arbitrarily choose a truthfulness rating based on their own opinions. Each group adheres to a rigorous set of standards, is fully transparent, and is most often a nonprofit and a member of the International Fact-Checking Network, or IFCN. We'll use PolitiFact as an example, as they're widely regarded as one of the best fact-checkers and have been awarded the Pulitzer Prize for their work. PolitiFact was founded in 2007 as an election year project for Florida's largest daily newspaper, and as of 2018 was handed over to the Pointer Institute, the newspaper's parent company. This move allowed PolitiFact to function as a completely not-for-profit national organization, which means they're not beholden to any group or individuals who might want to sway their truthfulness ratings. For funding, PolitiFact relies on grants, advertising revenue, and small donations from loyal users. Any funding over $1,000 is listed on their website, and they don't accept donations from anonymous sources, political parties, elected officials, or candidates seeking public office, or from any other source that could be considered a conflict of interest. The organization employs only journalists with a proven ability to set aside their own opinions and focus solely on the facts. These journalists don't make political contributions or work on campaigns. They don't sign online petitions, post yard signs, or participate in political marches. They keep their voting record to themselves and avoid expressing political views on social media. Each and every contributing journalist and staff member at PolitiFact is listed along with their credentials on the main site. Let's take a look at their methodology. Since PolitiFact is a nonprofit and not beholden to anyone, the statements they choose to rate are entirely their own decision. This allows them to try to pick the most newsworthy statements, as well as a fairly even mix of statements from opposite sides of the political landscape. They use a system called the Truthometer, which is a spectrum of truthfulness with six ratings. In order of decreasing truthfulness, they are true, mostly true, half true, mostly false, false, and pants on fire. Each statement the group chooses to rate is awarded one of these six ratings after a rigorous fact-checking process, which works like this. A statement is chosen by a staff member, whether for its newsworthiness, likelihood for spread on social media, or by reader suggestion. The most important factor in choosing statements to check is verifiability. Can the statement be proven to be objectively true or false? PolitiFact doesn't check opinions, and they recognize that there is some license for hyperbole in public speaking. If the statement is determined to be verifiable, the staff member begins the process of fact-checking. A review of what other fact-checkers have found previously, a thorough Google search, a search of other online databases, consultation with a variety of experts, a review of publications, and a final overall review of available evidence. For fact-checking operations, second-hand information isn't good enough. Groups like PolitiFact emphasize primary sources and original documentation. They acquire direct access to government reports and academic studies, and in those cases where PolitiFact must cite news reports from other media that rely on unnamed or unattributed sources, usually due to extreme newsworthiness, they note that they cannot independently verify their reporting. Once the original reporter has finished their preliminary fact-checking, they recommend a rating and submit the document to an editor. The two then work together, analyzing the check to make sure it's accurate. If they agree on the rating, the editor then loops in two additional editors, and the four people go over it again. Once the document has been thoroughly reviewed, the three editors vote on the rating, with two votes carrying the decision. The document is then published on the PolitiFact website. The organization notes that sometimes mistakes do happen, or new information becomes available that merits a change to the original rating. When that happens, the article is reviewed again, resubmitted, and posted to the website with a notice of the change and a link to the original rating. As with everything fact-checkers do, transparency is crucial to their operation. 
PolitiFact isn't alone in their rigorous standards for fact-checking. You'll find similar requirements at each organization dedicated to upholding the truth in the public sphere. One thing to note is that, even though these groups take it upon themselves to hand out truthfulness ratings, their goal isn't simply to tell the reader what's right, but to provide resources and verifiable facts to help the reader come to their own conclusions as to whether their rating is accurate. Okay, but what if, for whatever reason, you don't trust the results of a particular fact checker? Well, you're in luck. Studies have shown that when different fact checking groups rate the same statements, they often come to very similar conclusions on the statement's truthfulness. So just find a group that you do trust and rest assured that if they're an honest, reputable fact checking operation, most other checkers will agree with their conclusion. If the conclusion is unanimous across the gamut of fact checkers and you still don't trust them, it might be worth your while to ask yourself why that is. You may have some innate bias that you're not aware of, and fact checkers are only there to help you fix that and find out what's really accurate. You can also use tools like MediaBiasFactCheck.com to get a sense of whether a source does have some hidden bias. For what it's worth, you'll find just about every member of the IFCN listed under Least Biased, including PolitiFact. So the next time you're not sure about the accuracy of a statement, or you need to combat some fake news on social media, or you just want to read up on some of the more outrageous claims made by someone in the political arena, use a fact checker, or several. They're an incredibly valuable resource in an increasingly polarized society. And while you're at it, please do yourself a favor and protect your personal data. I've mentioned this in previous videos about Facebook's data scandal, but using a password manager that can automatically detect when your data is compromised is such an easy way to make sure your identity and valuable data remain safe online. There are plenty of services that do this, but I personally use Dashlane. Seriously, if you only listen to one of my sponsorship pitches, listen to this one. I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't 100% trust their service. The newest version of Dashlane is more than just a multi-device password manager, too. It also has a built-in, super secure VPN to keep your browsing absolutely safe from prying eyes. It doesn't have ads, your data is never collected, and you get access to the peace of mind that can only come from 100% secure browsing. Dashlane also offers dark web monitoring, a service that scans the web for any leaked personal data and sends you alerts, so you can take immediate action to protect your accounts. This secures everything from credit card numbers, to social security numbers, to banking and social media passwords. Thanks to dark web monitoring, you never have to worry about losing your personal information again. Dashlane's dark web service scans more than 12 billion records attached to hacks and data breaches, with almost a million new records added every day. Go to dashlane.com slash second thought to try out these awesome features with a free trial of Dashlane Premium. And if you really want to get serious about online security, be one of the first 200 people to use the coupon code second thought to get 10% off your subscription. Just give it a try. I promise you'll like it. If you have any requests for future videos, leave it in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.